Okay, welcome back. Um, so that last example was so involved that it knocked my internet out temporarily. Um, but I'm back now, and so I wanted to walk you through um, this next example, which talks about cumulative frequency distributions. And so what a cumulative frequency distribution is, is it's just a distribution that shows the number of values that are less than or equal to a specific value, usually some upper bound. Um, so for example, in this example here, we can look at all of the, all, the number of data points that were less than 99.5. Well, there were none because the smallest values were between 99.5 and 104.5. So we have a zero there. And then how many are less than the next lower bound, which is 104.5? Well, the two that were in the previous class. And so you just get two, um, two out of the 50. I guess that's 4% were less than um, 104.5. And then this next value, which is 10, that's two plus eight. So that's just the sum of the two classes that were less than 109.5. So that's where we got this 10. And then the 28 is the 10 plus the 18 here. That gives you 28 values that were less than 114.5. So 28 over 50, that would be 56% um, were less than 114.5. And this goes on. And notice that it's all the lower class boundaries and then at the very end, the upper class boundary for the last class. So 50 out of 50 data points were less than 134.5 because we had 50 data points and that was the biggest upper bound. Um, anything sh that I should add, Karen? No, I was just gonna point out, like my notes say that it's usually an upper boundary. Mm -hmm. I copied that from the textbook. That's kind of confusing. So just ignore that statement. Basically, you're getting all of um, these values here from all of your lower class boundaries, but then you also do need to include the largest um, upper class boundary. Well, yeah, I mean, well, also the lower class boundary is the upper class boundary for the previous class, so. Right, so. Confusing. Yeah, like you can either use the first column or the second column, but if you use the second column, then you have to make sure you also include the 99.5. All right, so I think we have one more slide to go through in this section. All right, so ungrouped frequency distribution. So this is when your class or your, your, um, your range is so small that you basically only have one number per class. And so in this case, you have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We don't need to group these into, into classes because they're just basically one number. Um, so this is when um, the range, so sorry, each class is just a single value is I guess the best way to put that. Um, so this might be like scores on a quiz or something, right? So you might have six got six people got a 12, one person got a 13, one person got a 19. Um, it looks like most people, eight people got a 16, which is like an 80% out of 20. Shouldn't be bad. I'm just making this up. Um, and Connect will tell the students when to use an ungrouped frequency distribution and when to use a grouped one. So it's nothing they have to necessarily determine on their own um so yeah cool and that's the end of this video that's the end of section 2.1